Hello and welcome to this edition of Standard Deviation, my column and video series. I'm TCA Sharad Raghavan, Deputy Editor at The Print, and I'm going to be talking to you about how, due to the Modi government's lack of follow through on its energy security promises, we continue to face risks from global events such as the attacks on ships in the Red Sea. The Narendra Modi government had previously promised to reduce India's oil imports by 10%. However, its own data shows that between April and October 2023, India imported more oil than during the same period of the pre-pandemic year of 2019. While this worked out to India's advantage in the aftermath of the Russia-Ukraine war, which made cheap oil available to us, the Israel-Hamas conflict could hurt us. The government has set laudable targets to enhance India's energy security, but its lack of consistent follow-through could cost us now. At a time when India's dependence on imported oil remains overwhelmingly high, it makes complete sense to promise that we'll blend increasing amounts of ethanol with petrol. It also makes strategic sense to say that we'll expand our oil storage capacity. But while the commitment to ethanol blending is being sacrificed in favor of bringing down politically sensitive food prices, the progress on expanding storage is too slow to be of any help in times of trouble. Now, it's nobody's case that reduced oil imports should be achieved at the expense of India's growing fuel demand. We are an economy that's growing robustly and our overall fuel demand will naturally increase. This is as it should be. The viable solution, which is neither new nor one that the government is unaware of, is to reduce the crude oil component of this fuel and substitute it with ethanol and biodiesel. Apart from environmental benefits, this approach also reduces our dependence on imports. As I said in the beginning, while the Russia-Ukraine war has played to India's advantage as far as oil acquisition is concerned, the Israel-Hamas conflict could hurt us. Houthi rebels in Yemen, in solidarity with Palestine, have been attacking ships trying to cross the Red Sea. The Red Sea is critical to enter and exit the Suez Canal, which is a crucial sea link connecting Asia and Europe and the Americas. Shipping companies have paused their activities in the Red Sea and are looking for viable alternatives. Bypassing the Suez Canal requires the ships to go all the way around the continent of Africa, meaning a huge increase in costs and travel times. Why does this impact India in particular? Because India has been importing about 40% of its oil requirement from Russia at discounted rates. The print reported last week how ships bearing oil from Russia might now see a 63% increase in their travel times. Of course, not all of Russia's oil supplies to India come through the Suez Canal, but shipping analytics companies say it's still significant. Now, India doesn't have huge oil storage capacities. Our strategy so far is not to buy oil, store it, and then release it gradually when needed. Instead, we prepare for a constant flow of oil supplies. A delay in oil shipments from Russia, therefore, can place quite a strain on our reserves, forcing us to turn to other, potentially more expensive sources of oil. How does this connect to ethanol blending? Because it is through ethanol and biodiesel use that we can, over time, reduce our dependence on oil and especially imported oil. The Modi government has set a target of 20% blending by 2025. The problem is that in its now trademarked knee-jerk fashion, the government in early December imposed a ban on the use of sugar for ethanol blending purposes in an attempt to increase sugar supply for other uses and to reduce sugar prices. A week later, this was partially reversed. Another government trademark. But a 17 lakh ton limit was imposed on how much sugar can be diverted for ethanol production. The government's own Niti Aayog, in its roadmap for ethanol blending in India, has estimated that the country will need 60 lakh tons of sugar per year for blending purposes to meet its targets by 2025. The 17 lakh ton limit falls well short of this. The government has for a while now given priority to the urban middle class's shrill demand for lower food prices at the expense of farmers' incomes. 
This has come in the form of export bans on wheat, types of rice, sugar and onions. Now this blinkered view of only addressing the rise in prices of food items is coming at the expense of our energy security as well. India already doesn't have the capacity to produce the ethanol required for the government's blending program. We should be augmenting this instead of periodically curtailing it because it's politically useful to do so. Coming to oil storage, the situation is different. It's not as if we are very short of storage capacity, but increasing it on priority would have placed us in a very comfortable situation right now where we wouldn't have to worry about the belligerence of Houthi rebels about 4,000 kilometers away. India currently has a storage capacity of 5.33 million metric tons of crude, which the government said worked out to about nine and a half days of supply at 2019-20 consumption levels. In addition, the public sector oil companies have storage capacities totaling another 64.5 days. With higher levels of consumption now though, these reserves will likely last for shorter periods. This could work in an emergency, but significantly expanding capacity to say six months worth of supplies would allow us to greatly control how much we need to import during troubled times. The government announced back in 2021 that it would add 6.5 million tons of storage capacity, but this hasn't come online yet. We took smart advantage of the slump in fuel prices in 2020 and saved ourselves rupees 5,000 crore. If we had moved faster on creating even more storage, we could have relied on those reserves when the prices subsequently rose sharply. Our energy security is of prime importance. Indeed, if we manage our oil imports well, then we can even dampen the impact of at least one of the dual pressures of food and fuel on Indian price levels. Political considerations need to take a back seat for once. On that note, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching.